I am a huge fan of this film, High Fidelity with John Cusack. It, I really like enjoy this movie. It's, uh, it's a great movie. Uh, I can like totally connect with the lead character, Rob Gordon, played by Cusack because of his like, um, you know, obsession with music. You know, I have a massive obsession with music and Soto's the main character. And like, um, he has like, uh, kind of sort of like me, he like has like um, an encyclopedic knowledge of, you know, old music and, you know, some nude music as well. And, uh, and like, uh, the, the plot revolves around like uh, him, like uh, running a record store in Chicago and like uh he recounts all of his like uh his breakups you know of um his old flames you know because like uh the main plot of this is like his recent breakup with his girlfriend because he has like um like while he has like a you know encyclopedic knowledge of music he has like uh you know a problem understanding women and like uh so that's why he like recounts like all like what went wrong with his uh, his past you know romance you know s you know s stuff like that. Uh, but like um, most of it like uh, most of the story takes place in his uh, record store you know with him and his uh, two coworkers who are considered like uh, rock snobs. They insult customers who go in and like, uh, you know, they like mock their musical tastes and whatnot. But, uh, you know, it's a, it's an entertaining film. Like uh, if you're like one of those guys who likes to, you know, chat, you know, walk into a record store and, uh, you know, chat with like the employees or, you know, just search and browse for records, you know, but, uh, like uh this movie was uh filmed in chicago and the store in this film uh championship vinyl it is actually based on uh reckless records in uh downtown chicago well there's two reckless records but uh yeah that um i forget like oh, which particular reckless records that uh that uh shop in, in this film is based on but anyway uh Five years before uh, this movie, there was uh, Empire Records. I have a copy of that on, uh, on VHS, but uh, I'm not going to bother showing it to you because I actually showed it to you guys, like, uh, you know, a few videos, few past videos, you know, the Indians video that I should, that I, uh, that I posted. So, so yeah, that film uh, also... That wasn't like uh, as best reviewed as uh, High Fidelity, but it it did have like you know a cult following to it, you know, because of like the the cast and the um, the music, you know, it has like a lot of you know '90s alternative like fucking Jim Blossoms, uh, Toe the Wet Sprocket, Better Than Ezra, uh, Edwin Collins, and. Um, Evan Dondo, you know, from the band The Lemonheads, I have their album, uh, It's a Shame About Ray, and I also have, like, a mini poster from that album I got, but, uh, there are, like, other songs in that movie that did not appear on the official soundtrack album, like, there was, uh, Dishwalla's Counting Blue Cars, uh, from their album Pet Your Friends, uh, that which I actually own, but that did not appear on that soundtrack. Um, and there was also uh, the band Sponge. Their song "Plowed" plays in a particularly um, crucial scene where, like everybody, where like you know a ton of uh, music fans like head to the record store to watch a free show, and. Um, so yeah, that did not appear on that soundtrack either. But I also had that album of Sponge, and um, you know, with their song "Plowed," like I said. One uh, 
there was another band you know there was another there was a ton of other songs in that movie that did not appear on the soundtrack to empire records but um this is another example of you know of a band that did not appear on the soundtrack it's <laughs> this is kind of a ridiculous name though uh this is a band called the ass ponies <laughs> I don't know why they called it, they called them that, but it's kind of a funny, funny band name. But uh, anyway, so I um, this is their album, Electric Rock Music. You know, this is basically like their more well-known album. You know, this was released uh, 1994 through A and N Records. You know, just a year before uh, Empire Records was released. As a matter of fact, uh, the soundtrack actually appears under the same record label, a &M. But anyway, um, so yeah, their song, which appears, which is on this album, Little Bastard, <laughs> uh, that song appears in that movie, but like I said, it did not appear on the official album. But um, I came across this at my nearest uh, Half Price Books in Skokie, and... Um, I um I, I I looked it up on my I looked the band up on my phone and um like I said this is like their more well known album but they have had like uh three or four other albums so I wouldn't say that this particular band is like um obscure as shit uh, unlike the unlike some of the other ones that I uh, mentioned in previous videos um I uh think that this is a real interesting band you know they're like um uh, are a mix between like alternative rock and uh country rock you know alternative country that sort of thing you know it, it's got like uh you know like uh two of my one of my favorite bands is uh wilco you know uh they're sort of like uh kind of like you know alternative country you know kind of like uh and there's another band called the Jayhawks. You know, they're also a bar, part of the same, you know, part of the same genre. And there's also, um, oh, what's that band called? Um, you know, they did a cover, of, you know, of uh, Bad Company's uh, Golden Smog. That's uh, that's another band that uh, appears, you know, under that same genre. You know, I have one of their albums, but uh, they're they're you know sort of like you know a side project. You know, they got you know musicians from other bands in that band, and uh, the Golden Smog is another good good rock group. You know, but uh, I do enjoy this this band because. I do like, you know, a lot of alternative country, you know, but I'm not into like, you know, full blown country, you know, I don't like uh, all too much of the sh modern country shit they play on the radio like too many times a day. I just can't stand too much of it. As a matter of fact, I can't really stand modern country at all, you know, but uh, I do like this band, you know, their southern, you know, style. You know, they got like a, a little bit of a folk sound to it, you know. So, yeah, they're sort of like a mix between like Dinosaur Jr. and, uh, you know, Wilco, you know, shit like that. And, you know, and I figured, you know, since I like that kind of stuff, I figured I'd just, you know, add this to my, you know, musical interests and ultimately to my collection. And like I said, Little Bastard, which is their the second song off this album, there they appear in and it appears in Empire Records, but not on the soundtrack. But it does have like a music video to it. You can watch it on YouTube. Like I'm not sure about like the other ones, other songs, because like uh, as far as I I know that uh, the that's like the only single they have, you know, for this album, and. Uh, but their other their songs are their songs on this album are awesome. There's Wall Wall Eyed Girl, you know, track six, and uh, 
Blushing Bride is a good song, you know, track 11. It's a short one, you know, 2 minutes and 11 seconds, but, you know, it's not that. It's uh, it's still pretty good. I still enjoy it. All the other, all the other songs off this album are great. And, like, uh, if you're into, like, Jayhawks or Wilco or Dinosaur Jr., like, a, a mix of Wilco and Jayhawks and uh, Dinosaur Jr. and, you know, a little bit of uh, of Golden Smog, I would... Uh, I would pick this one up, but like I said, they this is not their only album, so I wouldn't say that they're obscure, but they are pretty much underrated. But you could probably hear them on the radio. Like I listen to like uh, you know Alt Backspace, you know on Q one hundred one every Sunday morning. Chances are you could probably hear one of their songs on that on during that hour. Well, I mean, it's uh, yeah, it goes on from like ten to twelve, in uh, every Sunday morning. But uh, this uh, this is so far the only album I own of Ass Ponies, because like I'd never heard of them before picking this one up and before reading that their song appeared in Empire Records, and that's like actually one of the how I came across this one. And so and that's basically it for uh, the, this description. But uh, if you find this at either Half Price Books or Goodwill, just, uh, you know, pick it up and see what you think of it. So, Ass Ponies, electric rock music released through A&M, A&M Records, through, um, released in 1994. And uh, and that's basically it. Thanks for watching.